So, I have received my new toy, but my target stands are still in the mail, which means the only thing I could do is zero my optic at the range. Therefore, I'll be talking about a subject close to my heart and very relevant to nowadays events. Starship Troopers. Pay attention. God, that was a good movie. But today, I'll be talking specifically about the books, because I wholeheartedly believe Robert Heinlein was completely correct on the nature of republics. And also because his book is starting to look like a prophecy rather than fiction. In his book, Einland established one of the premises to the creation of the Federation was roaming bands of youth, a good number of them brainwashed into destructive socialist ideologies, which is one of the only parts that Verhoeven got right with a speech from Ratchek, played by Michael Ironside. This year we explored the failure of democracy, how the social scientists brought our world to the brink of chaos. We talked about the veterans, how they took control and impose the stability that has lasted for generations since. You know these facts, but have I taught you anything of value this year? Hmm? Unless you have been living under a really big rock, you must have heard that the US is going through a lot of absolutely entirely peaceful protests. the rest of the Western world is not faring much better. Between crazy commies and politicians refusing to list Covid measures so that they don't face any consequences for their disastrous measures, more and more pressure and dissent is building up. So we have one of the requisites already satisfied, what about the second big element? Well, that is war with China, which I think is inevitable at this point. I think the CCP knows full well that it has absolutely no chance of winning in part because Chinese army is unproven, equipped with unreliable equipment at best, and would instantly have to fight on most of its border against India, Japan, USA, a bunch of Southeast Asian countries, Australia, and most likely Russia will join in the fun. Not only that, but the Chinese army true purpose is not of defending the country, its purpose is to subdue the population it would have to deal with internal conflict in all areas depleted of army personnel. So unless the CCP falls very soon, I think it's inevitable that we fight against China, and that would be the second big event for the future Heinlein imagined, or maybe prophesized. But the most important point in this book is not the formation of the Federation, a Heinlein Republic if you will, it is that ultimately, it is impossible for a democracy of any kind to survive if the population becomes complacent and puts corrupt individuals in office. Which is exactly what has happened in so many cities, states and countries. All a politician has to do to be elected in these areas is, quite frankly, to promise the biggest illusion of safety and the most free stuff. That's it. And people have been swallowing that hook, line and sinker for decades now. I'm still trying to move to the US and the first thing I did was print a map and draw a big X on all of the places I did not want to move, specifically for gun laws in this case. Every single area where Democrat politicians are in control of anything ended up being crossed out. Sorry, South Park. Screw you guys, I'm going home. So the main issue is responsibility. How do you get irresponsible people to vote responsibly? Short answer is, you can't. Humans are opportunistic animals, and just like the honorable trash panda, if somebody is living fine by parasiting somebody else, then the rest of the population will tend more and more towards being lazy. In ancient Greece, in places such as Athens, Sparta and other city-states, the right to hold office and vote was limited to free fighting age men, which did not help much in the end because voting rights were still given to all, allowing for the corrupt to take hold. Different era, same issue. So Heinlein's solution is rather simple. Since the corrupt politicians depend on the irresponsible, cut them off their supply. That is achieved by separation between civilians and citizens. The civilians still enjoy the same basic human rights and liberties as citizens, but the right to vote and hold public office is locked behind grueling service where everyone starts at the rock bottom. 
Obviously, it is not an absolute certainty that no corrupt individual would ever be able to get in, but do you really believe people like Hillary or AOC would even be willing to go through boot camp, let alone finish it and go on a tour of duty? Just the obligation to drag yourself through a very literal mud would be more than enough to remove or prevent the overwhelming majority of corrupt individuals from accessing power. Sure, there might be one here and there that is motivated enough to pass basic training and make a tour. We'll probably be able to find a handful of individuals just as corrupt, but let's be honest here. When the only people who can vote earn that right through blood, sweat and tears, they're very unlikely to appreciate an opportunistic ass like AOC. Couple that with actually learning about political philosophy, and kids might not turn into communists so fast. Another advantage of this system where everybody expects the leader to take his responsibility is that it would be pretty much impossible for a politician to escape his responsibilities. In the book, this is shown by the debacle of the Klendatu drop, where the Sky Marshal is taking responsibility for this particular fuck up, unlike politicians right now who are going full tyrant with Covid blood passport and tracing apps. On a side note, if you are still terrified about the virus and not about that, there is something very wrong with your priorities. The other part of Heinlein philosophy that I'm sure many watching would appreciate, the state has an extremely hands-off approach toward the economy, to the point where it's pretty much absent, something Milton Friedman would have been very proud of. So despite what the director and everybody who don't understand what fascism is said, the Federation is pretty much libertarian paradise. Just don't settle in Buenos Aires and you'll be fine. And if you live in Buenos Aires, you might still have some time to like, comment, subscribe, click the bell, and hopefully next time I'll finally have all of my gear to recall my shooting session. Unless the Covid Stasi got me. In the meantime, you can go in the description below to watch The Politics of Starship Trooper by Sargon and Friends. Really, really good video on Heinlein's philosophy. Salut, bonsoir!